Hello everyone, Scott, so I'm coming to you live from Oahu. It is August 30th, 2015, 7.45 in the morning. Figure we talk about sales training. So my question for you is sales, is sales supposed to be hard? Is sales supposed to be hard? And I want you to think about this for a second. Is sales supposed to be hard? And I'm gonna tell you, yes. Sales is supposed to be difficult. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, background into my life, and then uh, we're gonna turn this into a lesson for you. So I first started doing sales right out of college. I was working for a, a life insurance company, and I was probably the 15th worst salesperson on the planet at that point in my life, and I failed miserably. I failed, I failed, I failed, I failed. Uh, I, I had this job, they paid a little bit of money, and it just wasn't working out. I had to go borrow some money to make some living expenses, and it was just, it was bad. And I vowed to myself, you know what, here's the thing. I'm gonna get better at what I do, and I'm gonna be able to be the best salesperson that there is. And so, I, I left that job, it wasn't pretty. I lost a bunch of money, I had to pay back a bunch of money, and I vowed I'm gonna be better, I'm gonna be the best, and it hurt. It, it, was, it, was a, it was a shock to my ego. I thought that you know, no matter what I could do, I was probably in my mid to late 20s at the time, no matter what I could do, I'm gonna be the best at it, and I just failed miserably. So you know, as a salesperson, there's a lot of things you need to know about. You need to know about like psychology, how to talk to people. I mean, this is like expert level, by the way, right? So how to talk to people, psychology, question asking, body language, negotiation. I mean, there's just a, so much, a whole bunch into it. And sales is supposed to be hard. And thank goodness it is because it weeds people out. It takes them out. But for you, as long as we stick with it, and as long as you get good advice, you know, a good trainer is never gonna push you ethically. They're gonna push your boundaries on what's gonna make you comfortable and uncomfortable, but they're never gonna push your ethics, or they never should. And if they, they are, then that's a sign that they're they're not the right person for you. And so, you know, training's gonna be hard, presentations are gonna be hard, learning is gonna be hard. It's not supposed to be easy, but if you take a look at just about anything else on the, pl the planet on that you're gonna do, it's the same way. Any skill that you're gonna learn over time to become good at is gonna take time and effort, and sales is no different. And people go, hey Scott, but what about that natural born salesperson? You know, natural born salespeople, there's not that very many of them. There's, there are definitely people out there who have a personality that they were born with, who've been through a lot of experiences over their life, who were brought up by a certain type of people who asked questions in a certain way, or were maybe salespeople themselves, or, or did something. Yeah, that's not really a natural born salesperson. They were, they were taught how to do that, okay? So there are some people who have some advantages, but for the most part, the average person that I deal with that comes into sales, they don't have skills, they have to go out how to learn. I mean, for you, what you need to know is sales is supposed to be hard, and thank goodness it is, because it weeds people out. So, my question for you, my second question is, how do you get better? What do you do to get better, okay? So, one of the things that you do is you get a mentor, you find somebody who could teach you, you watch other salespeople, and you whatever that you like that they did, you write down, and whatever you don't like, and it, like if it's unethical, then you just don't do it. The other thing is you could buy some CDs. Now, I'm gonna share something with you, typically, and this isn't the case all the time. Typically, most products that you can buy off the internet that teach you how to do stuff that are like below the $197, $297 mark aren't very good. They have good information in there, but their job is to get you to the next level. And if you really want to be find the good stuff, you might have to scrimp and save, and you might have to like you know eat Top Ramen for a week. I, I've done that a couple of times to buy a product to be better at what I did knowing that those upper end products are typically better and they're gonna give you better information and you can learn faster from it. So sure, look, you know, if money's an issue, I get that. Buy some of the lower products that are like 47, 87, 97 dollars, but only buy a few of them and then move to the next one because that's really what's gonna be to help you out and be better at what you do. Now sometimes you can get on a mailing list and you could, you know, have your guru, whoever the person is, and they sell a product or service and occasionally it goes on sale. You just don't always have to buy something on sale. Like, you know, I, I hear people go, well, I'm gonna wait for that to go on sale. I'm like, okay, let me get this straight. You're gonna wait six months of sales cycles for you to save 50 bucks, and you're gonna miss out on maybe 10% sales, and it could be costing you 20 to $30,000 to save $50. That just doesn't make sense. It costs you to get good knowledge, okay? So you could go to seminars, um, you know, last ditch effort. I hate buying used material on eBay. I'd rather give the money to the person who designed it. And that's just a personal preference on my part. Occasionally I have brought stuff off of eBay. You know, I've uh, I've emailed back and forth with somebody that I really like and have respect for. But if you're gonna do that, make sure that you have really thought out questions first and you don't waste that person's time. You know, like sometimes people will email and they'll ask me a question. I'm like, you know what? I get that you're looking for clarification, but go back to the drawing board and send me a better question. 
And I'm not doing it to be a jerk, I'm doing it so that the person thinks more about what they're asking and what they're doing. And I am giving them an answer, but I'm not giving them all the answer. I want them to come back and do some work and come to me, okay? So you could always email somebody, you could ask them a question, and then, you know, you got live classes that you can go to and those are gonna cost too. You know, uh, it, you know when, it, when it really comes down to it, it only works if you implement what you get out of it. So a lot of times people will hoard information. I know plenty of information hoarders, and this was me at one point. I didn't implement everything that I could, and I sat on top of information, and it was like I had a whole bank vault of things. That doesn't always work out for you, okay? So go out there. Sales is supposed to be hard. And, wow, well, the sun just like, whoosh. Now, if you could do a small favor for me in the box down below, leave a comment, question, or story. That'd be fantastic. To the right or to the left, there's a subscribe button. Subscribe. And then send it out to all your friends via StumbleUpon, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, Scott Bell. Only Scott Bell. Someone else will see you soon. Thanks for watching. Aloha.